Hi, John. It's your buddy, Betty Reggie, from the Archie Fan Site. I just want to wish you a happy fourth anniversary of the Riverdale Podcast. It's great. I look forward to it every Saturday morning. Keep them coming. Your friend, Betty Reggie. Bye. Hey, you're listening to the Riverdale Podcast. This is episode number 209. My name is Jonathan. Welcome to lovely Riverdale, USA. You guys, this is an Archie Comics fan podcast. We update every Saturday morning, and we've been doing that officially now for four years, you guys. This is the show's fourth anniversary special. I got a little whistle. I got some shakers. Uh, you can't see it, but there's there's confetti and, and balloons everywhere. It's a big, crazy time. Um, I am so excited. Um, I am so... Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe this whole episode is just going to be me patting myself on the back and being self-congratulatory. I hope it doesn't come off that way because uh, what I am is just immensely uh, thankful of everyone who's been around for the past four years listening to the show and enjoying it and having fun along with me. Um, for this special fourth anniversary, uh, we're inviting a guest onto the show. He's going to be on in just a moment. Um, longtime friend, longtime fan of the show, John Troughton, um, will be coming on momentarily to run through some questions that you guys sent in to ask some of his own questions. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so we're sort of, uh, d- disposing of the, the formalities of the, uh, the regular format of the show. It's going to be a little bit longer of a show. Um, so, but first up, we're going to talk about, uh, really briefly do a book of the week and then, uh, John will be on, as I said, momentarily, uh, we'll do our talk and then we'll split, um, and we'll come back next week and, you know, catch up on the news and all that stuff. Um, I hope that's cool. I hope you guys are excited. Before we jump into anything, I want to take a moment to thank Dennis. Dennis is our newest Patreon supporter. You can head over to patreon.com slash Riverdale podcast. There's a video there that explains what we're doing. Um, there's some goals we're hoping to reach. Um, and largely, that's just a, a way for you to contribute some money to the show. If it's something you appreciate, something you want to give back to, um, money is always appreciated. Uh, it helps me uh, it, it make this show. It helps compensate me for my time. Um, helps thank me. I don't know, however you, <laughs> however you want to look at it, however you want to phrase it. If you want to give me some bucks for doing the show, that would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. And you can do that over at patreon.com slash Riverdale Podcast. Dennis has chosen to do that. Um, thank you so much, Dennis. You are my newest uh, patron over at patreon.com. Um, so thank you very, very much. Having said all that, let's jump into it and talk about the book of the week. All right, folks, this week's book of the week is Jughead and Archie Comics Double Digest number 19. This features a a brand new cover by Dan Parent. Uh, Looks like inks by Bob Smith, colors by Tito Pina on there of uh, Jughead successfully eating a uh, cheeseburger while playing ping pong. Um, and I want to talk just quickly about the brand new lead story in here. Obviously, this is a digest. It's like 160 pages of fantastic Jughead comics. Um, but I'm going to concentrate on this story just owing to the the time constraints of this week's episode. I thought about not doing um, a book of the week at all, but uh, I love doing books of the week. I've always done a book of the week, and... Um, we're sort of in this, like, sad countdown of new Fernando Ruiz stories. Um, as I talked about last week, maybe even the week before, as I've been talking about, uh, Fernando is going to, is not going to continue to do Archie work. So we've got sort of these last few stories of his coming out. And I thought this one was great. Um, as I said, Jughead and Archie... Comics Double Digest number 19, it leads off with a brand new story called Fix-It Friends. This was written by Francis Bonnet, 
with pencils by Fernando Ruiz, uh, inks by Bob Smith. Letters by Jack Morelli, colors by Glenn Whitmore. That is the classic team right there, at least on the art side of things. I'm not familiar with Francis Bonnet. If anyone else is, please let me know. Um, but this was a super fun story. Um, uh, you know, a quick, concise, funny, um, you know, slapstick, great story. Um, the premise is that Hiram Lodge has some stuff that needs to get done around the mansion, but he knows that if he hires a handyman, the handyman's going to make him pay like crazy because he knows the handyman will know that, that Hiram's got a pile of money. That's pretty evident. Even if it weren't evident from the surroundings of his mansion, uh, it would be, everyone knows the name Lodge, at least in the world of Archie Comics. So, uh, Archie somehow convinces uh, Mr. Lodge that uh, you know he's fixed tons of stuff. Jughead has fixed tons of stuff. They just look it up on their phone. Uh, they go to my tube, quote unquote my tube, and uh, do a search, and they get a you know a blow by blow description of how to do all these things. And <laughs> so they fix one thing. Mr. Lodge feels a little more confident and uh, allows them to fix other things around the house. And I, w- I will leave it up to you. I'm sure you can surmise how this ends. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty fantastic. There's some, uh, some, some structural damage. <laughs> There's some flooding. Um, it, it's fantastic. Yeah, the only thing we were really, we really fell short on was uh, Archie and Jughead ran out of Lodge Mansion instead of getting thrown out by Mr. Lodge. But that makes sense owing to the to the story and how it's told. I just always love to see Lodge uh, throw Archie out of the mansion. In a lot of ways, a very classic story. But there's one um, there's one classic Fernando Ruiz trope that I love, and then one kind of like modern gag that I really... Uh, there were two things that I wanted to specifically highlight. One is that final page, final panel. Um, I don't want to say too much, but Lodge Mansion... Uh, is in some rising water, and there is that classic uh, Fernando Ruiz animal that kind of sneaks into that scene. Um, I'm sure if you read his stories, folks will be walking down the street, and you'll see a little cat or a dog or a bunny rabbit or a squirrel or something, just a, a cool, um, not quite anthropomorphic, not standing up on their hind legs or anything, but um, just a, like a, a beautiful, almost classic Disney-style um, animal in the background. A little more sentient than your normal squirrel, I guess I would say. Um, and in this particular panel, it is a fish that is just <laughs> swimming through Lodge Mansion, uh, has leapt out of the water, and is pretty much smiling at the reader. Has like a pretty uh, human-looking smile and eyes. Um, not in a way that's creepy, but in a way that's really adorable. Um, and I love that. That I, that I feel like is one of the things I will miss most uh, when there are when there are no more Fernando Ruiz Archie stories, which is a sad thing to say out loud. The other gag I wanted to hit on um, is the fact that uh, in the the uh, intro pages of this story, as Jughead and Archie are talking with Hiram Lodge, Veronica is talking to uh, Reggie on like Skype or FaceTime or something on her phone. So even though Reggie doesn't appear in the story necessarily, he still gets like this wisecrack dig in um, at Archie and Jughead from whatever remote location he is. There's a, uh, uh, <laughs> it's a panel of, uh, of, of Hiram uh, getting into Archie and Jughead's business and uh, also in the shot. Uh, like a really well-framed, nicely drawn panel is uh, Veronica's hand holding a phone, and Reggie's on there just giving a snide smile and uh, uh, and sort of uh, making fun of Archie. It's a really good moment. Um, and is at one time, you know, classic. You know, maybe in the 70s he would have made fun of them over a CB radio or something. You know, in the 60s he may have been insulting them over the telephone. So it's it's classic in that... in in, in it, it's classic in the structure of the of the narrative and the way that it's play that way that it plays out and the way that our, that Reggie's character is, but it's modern in the fact that the talk, technology is modern and I like that spin. I really thought that was a cool gag. So I guess that's about all I'll say about it. Um, it's great. 
and uh, I wish that we weren't counting down these Fernando stories, but we are. So let's have some fun with it, and we'll be uh, we'll be highlighting all the Fernando stories uh, leading right into May for with uh, his final story coming up. So um, let's wrap it up there. Go out and pick it up. This week's book of the week: Jughead and Archie Comics Double Digest Number Nineteen. All right, folks, one of my goals for the the coming months and maybe just in the next year, I guess, my goal for the future of the show is to be um, a little more transparent, maybe a little more available, uh, let you guys in to get to know me a little better. Uh, and in turn, I want to get to know you guys a little better and really build build this this show up as as more of a community than maybe it's been in the past. Um so to that end, I decided to do this sort of uh question session where you guys sent in questions and I'll answer them sort of a ask me anything kind of format. Now, I launched the show 4 years ago, March 10th, 2012 was the very first episode that I recorded um in my little office in my old apartment. And um, you know, not that I've reached mountains or, or you know, uh, pinnacles of success necessarily, but like I definitely didn't imagine then that all of this would happen, um, that I would meet all these people, that people would be supportive, that people would listen, that people would write in, that people would call in. Um, I definitely didn't factor in that this would be such a big part of my life for years and years as it has been. And for that, I'm really, really thankful for everyone who has been listening, everyone who just started re- listening recently, um, you know, anybody who's listened to and enjoyed the show. Um, thank you guys so much. So um, going back, looking back those four years, I couldn't think of anyone I'd rather have come on to help me out with the show. And thankfully, he said yes. Um, I couldn't think of anyone better to invite to be on the show than John Troughton, who is uh, one of the first people who really like reached out and uh, and you know wrote to me about enjoying the show and listening to the show? Has been a guest a number of times, and uh, you know is, is a blogger, uh, is a guy who's getting into radio and podcasting now, as I'm sure he'll talk about. A guy who's been a great friend and a great friend to the show over the years. Let's kick things right off. John Troughton, welcome to lovely Riverdale, USA. Thanks for having me back, Jonathan. Um, it's good to have you back. I'm looking forward to this AMA program for you. <laughs> it's been a long time. It has been. It's been it's been pre official Archie Podcast days. Yeah, so over a year and a half, it might have been like I close it was I think it was back during the Sabrina when Sabrina launched was the last time I was on. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that wasn't quite two years ago then. Yeah. When Chilling Adventures came out? No, the cartoon. Oh, the cartoon. Oh, man. Yeah, that was forever ago. Yeah. Oh, my no. gosh. <laughs> it's even longer than the, the comic book, <laughs> which oh, is man. still a long time for the comic. Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, my gosh. I'd forgotten about that cartoon. <laughs> I should go back at some point and look at those episodes because I, I feel like it's wrapped up, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm not quite sure what channel it would be on, because the channel I don't think is around anymore. It got rebranded. That's right, that's right. I bet I bet there's some kind of cheap DVD collection somewhere. Oh, I'm sure there is. Or you can maybe find it on YouTube or video, yeah. something like that. I'm sure it's out there. Um, so uh, you guys in the audience, in the listening audience, uh, sent in some questions. Um, John has been kind enough to help me uh, collect and collate those. We're going to go through those. Um, and just have a little bit of a conversation as we go. Um, John, feel free to answer any of the questions as well, if you feel. <laughs> Do I get to throw out my own thoughts? Yeah, why not? Why not? Huh. We'll have some fun. Um, do you, uh, do you, do you want to t- take it from here? Sure. Uh, we have several questions, and I thought, I hope you don't mind, I came up with my own questions to start off with. Sure, let's do it. Okay. So this is kind of a, maybe a three-part first question okay oh okay so there are, you have a few questions but how <laughs> many of them are in many parts well it's kind of all related okay okay i'm excited okay so i guess riverdale podcast is this your yes. very first podcast yes you ever... 
that you had. So this is like the, your first tiptoe into the world of podcasting. Yes, the first podcast I ever did. So how did you decide to do an Archie Comics fan podcast? Okay, I, I, I guess the the short story is that I was reading a lot of Archie Comics, and I went looking for an Archie Comics podcast, and there wasn't one, and that sort of put the the bug in my head, and then I thought about it for probably like a year or more before I actually just sat down and did it. Mm-hmm. But I remember like like I remember like like San Diego conventions coming and going and there being no news from Archie. Yeah. That I would like look for like blogs and podcasts and I would be like, okay, like they had a panel. <laughs> there must have been at least fifty people in the room, right? Like none mm-hmm. of them have a blog. Yeah. Like, yeah, none course. of them are tweeting about it? Like, how... Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Yeah. yeah it's, it not, just... it's inconsistent. Yeah, and it just seems so strange to me that that nobody was covering this stuff. So, um, it was something that I, I wanted, so I guess I, I just thought I'd go ahead and do it. And, you know, podcasting is a thing I've been really interested in and listening to a lot of them going back to, like, I don't know, not quite the earliest days of podcasts, but probably 2008, 2009... Mm-hmm. Um, I've been listening to a lot of comics podcasts going back to Comic Geek Speak and iFanboy and Around Comics and Indie Spinner Rack and a lot of those like early days ones that I liked a lot. So I figured I'd try it. Okay. So then you start doing a weekly Archie comic fan podcast. So do you do other podcasts? I have one other podcast um, with my friend Kate, it's called Fast Food Date, um, and that's more, um, that's more just a, like a fun thing that we do, um, and it's it's built in like seasons, so mm-hmm. we'll basically just go and eat fast food for ten consecutive weeks. Weeks we'll meet up like we'll set like one day, one night a week, and we'll go and eat fast food and hang out and talk. And then record that and release it as as podcasts. So we've done, we did two ten season episodes last year, um, and we're gonna do another one. Um, and I don't know, that's more of kind of a, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of unofficial. It's not very edited. It is just like kind of what's stream that? Stream of consciousness type thing. What's that? Like a stream of consciousness what's on your mind type of thing. Yeah, it's really just us talking. Um, And it's something that I thought would be fun to do um, just because there just really weren't any, any rules, any, anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost sort of like being in a band where you just sort of like, you make your thing and you put it out and if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. So I don't know if it's interesting, but I like making it with my friend Kate basically. (laughs) Ultimately, you know, when you're doing that, it's kind of like me and blogging. You kind of, you assume that other people like it because you're the one who's going to be reading it and putting it out there. And so keep it interesting for yourself and hopefully it'll be interesting to somebody else, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't necessarily think that folks who like the Riverdale podcast will like Fast Food Date and vice versa. (laughs) But everyone is welcome to check it out. um, (laughs) You can find us on SoundCloud and iTunes and stuff. I'll have to do that. Well, I've got a question here now from um, Archie Fan Forum regular Betty Reggie. Cool. So she wants to know, are you going to talk to Adam Hughes about Betty and Veronica? And I'm assuming she's talking about the new relaunched comic that's hopefully going to be coming out sometime this year. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see that comic book. I'm looking forward to it myself. And I have the feeling that as soon as we see artwork for that as soon as there's artwork to show we're gonna see it Mm -hmm. i think that they're gonna be pushing that book pretty hard yeah yeah um i mean if the other if the other books if archie and jughead were any indication like they'll really be pushing it um so i i don't know if i'll talk to adam hughes i i mean i like his work i'm excited about what he's gonna do but one of the the things i run into 
with current stuff that's coming out and current creators is that so much of it is already covered in other press. Yeah. So, so oh, go ahead. So it's like uh, the idea of coming up with something kind of a little unique perspective within your podcast. Maybe, you know, instead of repeating the same thing that you saw on every other blog or news website. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, when like when I started this, I felt like there was like almost no coverage of what was coming out from Archie Comics aside from like I remember reading stuff in like Comic Shop News or, you know, like here and there you'd be able to find it. And now, um, you know, their their publicity department is fantastic. <laughs> like like sure. they so by the time a new book has come out, the creators who've been working on that have been interviewed by, you know, CBR and Comics Alliance and Bleeding Cool and, you know, everybody right down the line. So if I feel like I have, a, like, a curiosity mm-hmm. about it, um, that's something I might look into. Um, but I don't know. I feel like I, I might be more inclined to just point people in the direction of where those interviews are. Sure. So I guess wait and see Betty Reggie. And also thanks Betty Reggie for sending a question in. Yeah. Next one. This is from Adam Alamo. Okay. Oh yeah. He's the, um, he's the uh, Archie, Archie fans guy. Yeah. Over. And I, I see him a lot on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. He's the, he's the Facebook dude. Is he on the, the fan forums too? I don't even know. I'm, be honest i'm not for sure i know he is involved with astro comics with uh dan parent and fernando ruiz and i don't know i see him a lot on the one facebook fan page yeah he's a super fan for sure yeah cool so he he wants to know what character that we haven't seen yet do you hope to see in the reboot okay well we just talked about have we talked to? I don't know if I've talked about Pepper on the show, but I've had Pepper on the brain lately. Uh, that's from uh, from the old Josie comics. Josie, Josie, yes, yeah, the one that got repla- uh, Valerie placed. Yeah, because someone on on the fan forums recently found an issue. I'm sorry, I don't remember who you are. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, someone found this Jughead comic from the '90s that, like, they had somehow snuck Pepper into. <laughs> um and and uh, whoever found it I will give you a shout out soon cuz I'm going to order that issue and I'm going to talk about it on the show <laughs> coming up and I'll give you a big shout out I'll make up for forgetting your name right now I promise. <laughs> and uh I found that super intriguing so that's been on my brain but there's got to be someone else. You know who I would love to see? It'll yeah, yeah. Nev- it'll never happen. I want to see Bubbles McBounce from the Little Archies. <laughs> She's like this really overweight girl that was mean, <laughs> and nobody liked her because she was she was chubby, but she, also because she was just really mean. <laughs> awesome, yeah. I'm not familiar with that character. You, you need to look her up. I I love Bubbles. Bubbles McBounce. <laughs> that's, that's who I want to see. <laughs> that sounds cool. I feel like that would work too because I think she would make a great like a secondary BFF for like Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> And I feel like I feel like the Archie book they've been like working in like different body types and stuff, yeah. which is rad. Have we seen Ethel in the new book? No, we really haven't. I don't think we've seen Ethel. Um, I don't. I don't think we have. No, I don't think we have. Yeah, I would love to see a return of Ethel. Um, I think she's. I think she's important. Yeah, I wonder. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the the Jughead first arc ends. Maybe maybe that would be a time to bring her in. You know? Oh, yeah. Maybe they have a plan there. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's really intriguing. I'm also wondering how they'll handle like her physically, like her looks. Mhm. Yeah. I hope they don't just make her really pretty or something. Yeah. I mean, I mean she's kind of inconsistently done that way. Yeah, yeah. But- but I, I I agree. I mean, not to say that she's ugly or anything like that, but I think you know to have kind of a unique appearance is actually not a bad thing, you know. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and I think that, um, yeah, definitely. Erica Henderson is drawing a bunch of different body types. 
mm-hmm. in Jughead. I mean, never mind like uh, Squirrel Girl. I love Squirrel Girl. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't kept up with it. Oh, that's that's my favorite Marvel book these days. I gotta get on that. Um, I do like her artwork a lot. I feel like she could do I, a great Ethel. I hope that's the plan. I, I, I could see that. I, I think we're like, between us and Betty Reggie, I think we're the only people of all the Archie fans I know who actually likes the current Jughead artist, Erica. But oh I well. I love it. I really, really like it. Um, I do think, unfortunately, not to get off on a whole sad tangent, but like, I feel like I would like... Like I, I really enjoy those books, and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a qualifier on that. Yeah. But I do. It's hard when it feels like they're coming at the expense of the other books. Sure. You know what I mean. So I feel like, like I can't blame some folks for sort of pointing the finger at those books and saying, you know, if those weren't here, we'd have this. Yeah. You know, we'd see. have the the classic brand still and i don't know if that's true so i i really judge them on their own merits um but yeah i love erica's artwork okay well i got a new question for you cool okay this is from and i i apologize if i mess up his last name okay this is jeff wince i believe is how you pronounce his last name cool he wants to know what happened to afterlife with archie Oh man. Three three question marks at the end. Yeah. Um obviously I'm not fully qualified to answer that question. But I think that um as far as I'm qualified <laughs> in my in my understanding is that uh Roberto has been working on the TV show. Mm-hmm. Um and it seems that that is you know where he's putting his his efforts and probably where he's being asked to put his efforts, frankly. Um, I'm, surpri- I'm surprised that they didn't like bring in a secondary writer to have him like plot and and then that person kind of you know come up with more of the you know somehow like have him be like the inspirational writer to kind of like come up with this is what's going to happen here and yeah here, yeah and, like act as like an overhead kind of like guide but otherwise have somebody else kind of move move the books along so they're actually being published yeah maybe, and maybe quarterly <laughs> yeah and with a book with a book that popular i feel like there yeah. would be a lot of people lining up to do it too yeah exactly that would be cool so, but i'm hope... not quite sure hopefully it'll be more regular they keep on saying that they said that last year around this time yeah i also I hope that when we see the TV show, it makes up for it. Yeah. That we see the TV show, and the TV show is so exciting and great and cool that uh, it makes up for all the delayed books. We'll um, be like, what's that? We'll be like bygones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I also, like, I do think it says something that when the book comes out, it's always great. Oh, it's... It's one of the best ones out there, to be honest. I, yeah. I like it so much. Yeah, it feels like it. They they don't skip a beat between yeah. issues, and I, I think that would be an easy thing to do. I mean, if you're if you are away from a book for eight months, mm-hmm. nine months, and then come back and pick up where you left off, I think that's a difficult thing to do. But I don't know. I mean, I I, I feel like I said on the show recently that in five years. Um, w- when you're looking back at, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't want to, I don't want to guess at how many issues will have come out in five years, but, but <laughs> I'll be up you know, to 24 at that. Yeah, point. exactly. Like if you have, even if you have like 24 issues and they've all got a consistent team, and you could read them straight through, um, that, you know, no one's gonna be thinking about those delays when they read it. Yeah. But I can't deny that I would like to read a lot more after Life with Archie. Me too. Okay, so I got Photo Roderick. Okay. And Oh yeah, Roderick's been a long time listener of the show. Okay. Great. Well he wa- he wants to know will there be an Archie Digest story when both the Archies and Josie and the Pussycats um head to the Rock and Roll Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't know, but that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like it's I mean, again, 
<laughs> I don't I don't have any uh I don't have any connections with Archie. I don't have any insight. Um I but... love it when those two bands get together and do do adventures together. Yeah, I love those storylines a lot. I feel like yeah, that was one of my one of my alternate Archie mm-hmm. timelines was recently that I, I was talking about was um the fact that when when the Archies and Josie and the Pussycats hang out together, uh the Archies are suddenly this world renowned band. Yeah. Which I think works perfectly. Um and I could definitely see that. I could definitely see I feel like they'd have to make a deal with the rock and roll. Is it the rock and roll hall of fame? Is that what he said? Yeah. Um so- yeah, they'd, cause they, yeah, they'd probably have to have special permission to use it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in the old days they would just sort of like make up like a like a like a cipher. I don't know if that's the right word for it. Yeah, but uh, um, but, but yeah, kind of like it, but kind of not. Yeah, exactly. Something that very clearly referenced it, but wasn't it. But now I feel like they'd almost sort of use that as a promotion if the rock and roll. Oh, I'm sure induction ceremony was coming up to do like a storyline around that. But that would be cool. Yep. Again, I don't I don't have any way of making that happen, uh, Roderick, but I think that would be really rad. Okay, well, speaking of uh, alternate realities and, and and the Pussycats and the Archies and where they exist, exist compared to the rest of the Archie characters, mm-hmm. DiCarlo came up with a, a lengthy question comment, okay? And along those same lines. And so basically says, hi, Jonathan. Um, this isn't really a question, more of a in the lines of uh, a suggestion. So a few weeks ago, you asked listeners to submit their lists of favorite alternate Archie verses. And I recently discovered that there does exist a Wikipedia page devoted to that very subject. And so there, uh, it's uh, alternate universes in Archie comics within uh, Wikipedia, Okay. Oh man. Okay, I'm looking at the link now. I don't want to open it up because it'll it'll mess with the Skype connection. But oh, sure that looks fantastic. I'm gonna check this out. Thank you. Well, basically, it says not only uh, were there things that I normally had never heard of, uh, such as Veronica's passport. Uh, it says I guess it could be, but does it need to be um, a, a alternate universe? But there were even a couple that I'd never heard of, like uh, Archie's Future Fun. Or as it was originally titled, Archie, Archie 2001. Oh, wow. Um, let's see. There was a Robotiverse in it. There was a, the manga Sabrinaverse in it. There mm-hmm. was the Chaos Sabrinaverse, Archie's Weird Mysteries. Um, anyway, the point here is that looking at this list, there are even more alternate Archie verses than I'd ever thought of. Could, could be that... Okay, so let me start my sentence over. It could be that list is even missing some, apart from the odd one-off stories, since there really isn't time to cover this subject in depth in the course of a regular podcast and still get to all the reviews, announcements, and other regular features. Maybe you could consider doing a one-off special podcast of an hour or so talking about just this topic. Um, Enough of these Archie universes, um, alternate Archie verses, are well known enough that I don't think this topic would be too obscure for, in most people's estimations. So if Ar- Veronica's passport is an alternate Archieverse, then what does that make Betty's diary? Could be fantasy, objective reality in, <laughs> in the main Archieverse, or only exist in some alternate tangent. This email is fantastic. Thank you, DiCarlo Rules. <laughs> so, oh, cat, go away. My cat's bothering me. <laughs> Trying to pull away the cords. <laughs> That's so anyway, the, so that's, that's interesting. I, I was like looking at the alternate versions of things. Archie one is my favorite, by the way. Yeah, Archie one would be great to do an Archie reboot version of Archie one. I wouldn't be surprised um, if Jughead continues. Oh yeah, with those like you know mid issue segments where he goes mm-hmm. into an alternate thing. Archie one can't be too far behind. Okay. Um, although I don't know, I feel like the shelf life of those is going to be pretty short. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the only thing that I like about it is it's kind of a way for him to kind of um, subconsciously work through the problem of the day within the larger book. So, yeah. Yeah. Usually it's spot on with uh, whatever's going on in his daydream and those those things that kind of works out on how he manages to solve that pro- particular problem in, in the main storyline, so... Yeah, so. yeah. For for anyone who isn't reading the book, um, Jughead encounters a problem. Basically, the, the book is in thirds. 
generally, at least the first few issues have been in thirds, where uh, Jughead will encounter a problem, and then in the middle of the book, he'll sort of, like, fall asleep and have a daydream that goes to a, an, an alternate, like, fantasy world. And then he comes back and kind of uses what he worked through in the fantasy world to solve the problem in, in the, the, th- the, the third portion of the book, yeah. yeah. Um, I always think of um, uh, Bobby's World, uh, the old cartoon, and I think of uh, I think of Doug. Oh, yeah. Doug would always go off on those sort of flights of fancy. Um, wait, where what were we talking about? Jughead. Uh, uh, yeah, it would Archie. be. Yeah, it would be cool if Archie One showed up. Oh, Archie Jughead. One, Archie One. Okay, so I got anonymous here. Okay. So oh, oh, well, hang on, hang on. Let me. Let's, oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's okay. So if Veronica's passport. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Is an alternate Archie verse. What does that make of Betty, uh, Betty's diary? Betty's, I feel like Betty's. Diary is, I mean, <laughs> it's tricky because nothing in Archie is really canon, <laughs> except when it is necessarily, except when it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like Betty's diary exists in regular Archie verse. I feel like Veronica's passport does too. Wasn't because Ver- Veronica's passport was just the beginning of the. Veronica series, I think. And see, I never read either of them. Yeah, because I think I thought that Veronica's passport started out. That was like one of Dan Parent's early books, okay. and that he had done that where she traveled to like a, a different country in each issue, and eventually that just became the Veronica book that ran for two hundred plus issues. So, I I don't. Mm, but wasn't Veronica's? I feel like Veronica's passport was also the. The comic where like she would always like like bust up a jewel heist or something like un like unbeknownst to her, or like someone would be trying to follow her. Or she would she would do some sort of like minor league Nancy Drew slew thing or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm misremembering, but um, but to, to this question, I I think it would be great to do an episode talking about all, a lot of the Archie alternate universes. Sure. Um. Sure. Yeah, that might be a good one to bring other voices in on. If if people like had their favorites or something. So, um, so DeCarlo rules. Thanks for bringing this to my attention. This list. I'm now. I'm gonna go, like, pour over it. You're and helping if... to plant seeds for future shows. <laughs> for sure. Wait, I have to make a note <laughs> of it right now. Um, Wikipedia. Okay. Alternate Archie. Okay, it's a note officially. Um, okay, so I think I think we answered that question. Yep. So now we've got anonymous here. Okay. Okay. What do you think was the oddest choice Archie Comics ever made? For example, Jughead's Diner. Awesome. This is a great question. This is also a good time to mention that you can send in anonymous questions. I don't know why I hadn't been like mentioning this and pushing this in the past but um riverdale podcast slash ask you can just type into your browser and it'll give you a little window to send a question this is the tumblr page right yep yep that'll take you yeah yeah riverdalepodcast.com is a tumblr page so you can just kind of go riverdalepodcast.com slash ask um and if you're if you're a tumblr user you can sign in um and you know send it as yourself or you can send it anonymously anonymously or you can send it and sign it at the bottom if you want to um but that's a good way to get in touch. It's super quick and simple. I don't know why I haven't been telling people that for years. Um, uh, but the question was, the oh, what is, the, what is the oddest thing? Okay, it says, um, what do you think was the oddest choice Archie Comics ever made? For example, Jughead's Diner. Hmm. Um, I mean, the sort of low-hanging fruit are the Spire books. <laughs> yeah. Like, the the licensed... Uh, Where they did that kind of the Christian, kind of really sappy... Yeah, that Al, Al Hartley did. I mean, yeah. for, for anyone who doesn't know, maybe everybody listening knows, but um, Archie licensed their characters. Um, the classic artist Al Hartley uh, became, from what I understand, became a born-again Christian in the 70s mm-hmm. and... Uh, was working for this comic company called Spire Christian Comics and went to Archie and basically licensed the characters to make these Christian books, which were sold 
outside of the newsstand, outside of the direct market, or maybe the direct market didn't exist when they were coming out, were sold at Christian bookstores and things like that. And you can find them like reasonably priced, and they're incredibly strange. Um, there was uh, um, uh, Johanna Draper Carlson, who, uh, John, you and I have talked to on a podcast in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, she wrote an article about it in this great magazine called um, Hogan's Alley, like did a great retrospective on that whole thing. Um, maybe that's not a, a good recommendation because it's hard to track down Hogan's Alley, but um, that's where I learned most of that stuff about it. Um, but I I feel like some of the oddest choices are like the weird licensed books because I feel like you can list the art the licensed Archie books on like almost on two hands. Mm-hmm. Like I think um You're talking like the turtles or the Yeah, like turtles for sure. Like going back anyone who's listened to the show for a long time knows that I love Zen Intergalactic Ninja. Yeah, I'm trying to think of that one, yeah. <laughs> Which I, I don't know if it's a good comic book because I just <laughs> I read it when I was young and I loved it when I was young. I'm sure it's bad, but I <laughs> I still really, really like it. And that was definitely an odd choice. Um but there definitely was that that era. He mentioned Jughead's Diner which was yeah. the late 80s. Um, you know, I think at the time, mm-hmm. I think the whole Archie and, I mean, now it's old hat, but like the whole Archie Punisher idea yeah, was just like the, you know, Marvel's Punisher, who's like the big, I mean, was was Archie even allowing its, cust- or its characters to have guns at that point? I and also th- they bring in like this big gun-toting vigilante from... <laughs> Art Marvel comics, you know? Yeah, that was definitely... It was an odd choice for the time. And it's a good point that, like, it doesn't seem crazy now. No. <laughs> but at the time, it seemed so wild. Yeah. I mean, anything that happens after Archie versus Predator. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, RV, maybe Archie versus Predator needs to be on that list. Or the Sharknado. <laughs> Sharknado is definitely weird. <laughs> um, But... I'm going to say it's probably some of the weird one-off ones. Um uh they did the the Texas Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Um <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, that was um some of the some of the folks from Mirage Studios, the guys who did Turtles, created mm-hmm. this this property and it was a, a like a CBS Sunday Saturday morning cartoon and stuff and they they did Archie published the comics. Um uh, they did this in the early '80s. They licensed this book called um, Man Tech, which okay. was, which is based on these um, these action figures. I'm forgetting what company they were from, but it was the same company that did the um, the the Crusaders, the Mighty Crusaders figures, uh, Remco, I think. Anyway, that's that's getting really nerdy, but like, I think some of the licensed books are really strange. Um, yeah. uh, I have a Bayou Billy comic book okay it's published by archie sometimes when i go to conventions and i'm in the quarter bins that's what i'm looking for is the weird licensed stuff but in terms of like riverdale stuff um i'm gonna say that the christian spire stuff is a pretty odd choice um maybe the uh jughead skateboarding phase oh my gosh you're totally right where he like went all punk yeah and like he lost the crown had like weird hair styles. He, yeah, he had like like uh, designs shaved into the side of his head, <laughs> kind of vanilla ice style. Yeah, <laughs> that was a weird choice. People were really mad about that. <laughs> like really mad. Yeah. <laughs> well. Okay. Yeah, I could talk about this forever, but maybe maybe we covered some of them. Hopefully okay. we hopefully we answered your question, anonymous. So I have a question here from uh, Murray. Yay. No, Murray. Yeah. Yeah, Murray's a, a longtime listener and supporter of the show. He's the best. So he, this is a little off topic, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so he says, okay, on your old site, Jonathan, mm-hmm. he used to say in the quote-unquote about Jonathan section something about you playing rock and roll records, and he might be forgetting the exact words okay Mm -hmm. so he wants to know were you or are you a dj what's and what's your favorite kind of music 
because he's a music fanatic and likes all kinds of stuff, but mostly he likes classic country and 50s and 60s rock and roll. So he wants to know what your go-to music is. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is this is when folks get really disappointed in me. But um my my favorite type of music is is pop music. Like I really like like radio pop music. Yeah. Um I I love Beyonce. I love um I don't know, the Chainsmokers. I like uh, I really like Kesha a lot, um, but I've also been listening to a lot of like indie pop stuff. I really like this band called Always from Canada. Um, but my real my go to is usually just like top forty pop radio, um, and I definitely had times in my life where I was like too cool for pop radio. But I'm I that hasn't been the case for the last probably fifteen years. You've shifted or back. So. Yeah, I I just I think it's great, and and my tastes are are pretty diverse. Otherwise, I do listen to a lot of other stuff, but like, if I'm going to listen to music, it's usually like <laughs> like <laughs> processed, produced pop music. <laughs> um, but I do. I used to DJ more than I do now. Oh, so um, you were a DJ, huh? Yeah, or, or yeah. They are. I yeah. I don't do it much anymore because people. Aren't, I find that people aren't very kind to DJs okay. in general. They usually have their own priorities of what they think you should be playing. So I'm more into, like, I like making mixes and stuff and, like, yeah. like blending records and beat matching and stuff, but um, I'm not super into I don't want to do any weddings ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too much pressure. Maybe you can do a divorce. I would love to DJ a divorce. <laughs> 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 That'd be a really good mix. That would go in there. That would go into that would go right into Murray's wheelhouse with old school country. There you go. For sure. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> there, there are some Hank Williams songs. There are some Patsy Cline songs. That would be fantastic for a divorce. <laughs> well. And I'm I'm getting old. I don't even know who's playing anymore. So <laughs> It's alright. It's never too late. Yeah. Okay, so I have, um, this is from Tim from Patreon, okay? Oh, cool. So he wants to know, how did you land the gig as the quote-unquote official podcast at Archie Comics? And then, why did you give up that mantle? (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) I mean, this had to be a question for sure. (laughs) Um, Okay, how I got it. Um... And I, I don't know, I, I mean, I don't know, I can tell my side of the story from, like, what I understand, but um, two, two New York Comic Cons ago, so New York Comic Con 2014, Okay. Um, I went down there, um, I had made some plans ahead to record the panels, they were having a Dark Circle panel and a, a you know, a sort of Riverdale-centric panel. Um, and I missed the Sonic one, but that's neither here nor there. So I went down and I kind of met everybody face to face for the first time. Like I met Alex and I met John Goldwater and I met Nancy Silverglight and, um, uh, Ron who does a lot of the publicity there. Like I met a lot of those folks and was sort of like face to face shaking hands and stuff. And, you know, um, and that was really cool. And they, they knew who I was, which was really nice. Um, everybody seemed to like know that I was doing the show, which was a cool feeling. Um, and then about a month after that, um, they contacted me and asked if I would be interested. And I sort of hemmed and hawed about it for a long time. Um, John, you know that cause I called you. Yeah, we spoke about it a little bit. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Should I do this? Is this a good idea? I'll go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Then thank you for that <laughs> advice. It was good advice. Um, but I, yeah, I was just I was immediately really concerned about the, like, oh, the integrity of the show and, oh, like, all these, like, you know, it was as though I was making high art or something yeah. <laughs> when, you know, it's just a, a podcast talking about comic books. Um, sure. So, yeah, so eventually, obviously, I said, yeah, I'll do it. Let's do it. Um, and it was a lot of fun. 
I had a really good time. It was a really good experience. I met tons of people. I've, you know, um, I got to go to the Archie offices and uh, interview Victor Gorlick. That was sort of like talking to Victor Gorlick and Mike Pellerito and Paul Kaminsky were really, really, really big for me. Um, and then I don't know. I I felt like in the in the year and change that I did it. Um, it, I mean, there was certain stuff that I didn't want to talk about because I was representing the company. Yeah. And some of it was just as simple as like, oh, I found this stack of like Hanna-Barbera comics that Archie published in the mid 90s. Like, I would love to talk about like why and how like they ended up publishing a Flintstones comic for like a year or something and you know the uh they had Mark Evanier doing Scooby Doo comics for the first time in 20 years yeah like just stuff like but, that but from the company point of view you'd really be more looking at oh we got to talk about the Archie reboot yeah exactly dark, exactly dark circles or whatever just because that's the stuff that they're trying to push now yeah exactly i mean i definitely couldn't go on and talk about the Flintstones which yeah. is a license that's held by DC yeah. now. Um, you know, they they can't sell those comics now and make any money off them. So it wouldn't be um it wouldn't be a smart decision for either of us, really. Sure. I mean that's not, you know, them putting constraints on me necessarily. That's me doing the job that I was hired to do. So um so yeah, it just sort of came to a point where I was like, you know, starting this show out was really about um, like chasing my own personal curiosities. Like, what am I curious about? And if that's, you know, initially that was like life with Archie. So I, you know, um, I talked to Paul Kupperberg and I got to ask him all my questions about life with Archie, mm-hmm. which was fantastic. And, um, you know, l- like I mentioned before, when I was reading those old Zen comics <laughs> that Archie published in the 90s, I like actually got to meet you know Steve Stern, who created those those books, co-created those books, and like wrote them, and yeah, I got to talk to pod- him. That was a good podcast. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know if I, <laughs> again. That's just like my. That was a while ago, and I I I liked it because I'd never heard of the guy, the, the character before. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's a weird part of Archie history. So I just, I guess my my curiosity at the time that I took the job was like, you know. How does this machine work? Like, who does what? Like, what, you know, there were there were things about how the process worked that I wanted to learn about. Um, and then I got to a point where I had different curiosities that didn't really gel. So I decided, you know, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hang it up. It was fun. I had a good time. Um, and it just seemed like a really natural stopping point to to wrap up my time there. I guess that answers the question. Is that? No, that sounds, that sounds good. Cool. Speaking of wrap up, I got one more question for you. Okay. Awesome. Is this from you or for someone else? This this is me. I'm just going to wrap, wrap up with one potentially simple question for you. Okay. So what, who is your, who's your favorite Archie character? Mm -hmm. I, I think I know, but I don't know. I don't, can, like, like unqualified, like I mean, it's got to be Jughead, right? That's what that's what I thought you would have liked the most. But ah, oh, but it's such an easy answer because <laughs> he's so great. And man, I'm trying to think of some sort of curveball answer too. Um, because I do love little Jinx too. Oh, I really love Lil Jinx. Yeah, they, I at some I, I miss the uh, reboot that they do, did with her. Oh man, yeah, that was the greatest. Um, did you? Wait, yeah, you read those books when they came out. Yeah, yeah, I loved those. Yeah, those were um, really good books. Yeah, and going back to the last question, that was another thing. Like, I loved those books, and I got to like interview the folks who made them. Yeah. That was really really fantastic. And that was the thing where, like, when you asked me, should I do it, and I was like. Think of the experiences you get to do that you wouldn't get to do otherwise, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how many people get to say that they podcasted for for Archie Comics? Yeah, I think one. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> um so. yeah yeah but i'm 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 super excited about what's coming up i mean mentioning little jinx um i know i've talked to you a little bit about wanting to do like uh like book club episodes oh yeah um so i would love to get you know two or three people read one or both of those um those jinx uh original graphic novels and talk about those um that's definitely something I'm looking forward to doing. Fun stuff. Yeah. Um, well, those are the questions, Jonathan. Cool. Well, thanks to everyone who sent a question in. This was super fun. Yeah, it was, I, uh, I didn't know how many questions you would have, so I mm-hmm. kind of came up with a few. I dropped a few of them because I saw the list that you did have, and mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of fun questions there. Yeah, yeah, and thank you, John, for for stepping in to to do the 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 grunt work no problem it <laughs> seems like every time i come on here it's always uh we end up talking a long time yeah yeah i always <laughs> have fun talking to you and i i honestly like i don't have anyone in my like regular daily life who's into archie comics so whenever i get someone on the phone <laughs> who can keep up in a conversation keep on talking, yeah yeah for sure um so john i don't want you to go before you uh oh. shout out all the stuff that you're working on and oh, doing sure. and where people can find you and sure um well you can always find me i don't do twitter as regularly as i should but if you ever wanted to look for me on twitter i'm on uh twitter slash what is it uh john troughton j-o-n-t-r-o-u-t-e-n um i do a blog um who doesn't um but i <laughs> Usually put out something at least once a day. I get I get antsy if I don't, but then sometimes it's a struggle. But it's uh, what is it? John Troughton dot blogspot dot com. But the big thing that I'm working on right now, which is kind of new and it's evolving, and I'm I'm hoping it comes together. I'm part of a new group of individuals creating a low power FM radio station called KICI one hundred five point three here in Iowa City. Awesome. So it's uh, if you live in Iowa City or in the surrounding community of uh, uh, communities of Coralville and parts of North Liberty, you would be able to hear us uh-huh. <laughs> and possibly online We're we're going to be doing some podcasting. Um, and and so hopefully that's going to be unfolding. Um, I have some stuff on my blog. We have a GoFundMe page because, of course, we're fundraising for that. And um, I'm working on a program called Iowa City Geek, which is going to be talking about all sorts of things related to fandom and geeky stuff and conventions and comics and festivals and all sorts of things kind of like that. And each week I'll have a different type of focus. So one episode I might be talking about gaming and um, next week I might be talking about Archie Comics and then next week I might be talking about uh, some interesting and weird collection so we'll see wh- where this is at in a year's time it'll I, it's kind of a fun trip and it's something i've never done before and i just kind of stumbled into it yeah i'm really excited about it and i i i hope that you'll let me know when everything comes to fruition so we can yeah i mean we will have the a right po- direction yeah we will have a podcast of the material um and so i'll at least at early on and so i'll definitely be able to direct people to to that and so hopefully the uh Hopefully it'll evolve into a, a good product. Uh, like I said, this is something totally new, so I'm anticipating there will be a little bit of growing pains, but mm-hmm. I'm uh, also hopeful that it'll be uh, kind of a f- fun and quality pro- uh, project for, for for me to be involved with. So, yeah, and hopefully something that people enjoy listening to. Awesome. Um, I guess we should wrap it up. Yeah. It's been a good a good 45-minute long chat. Um, so, uh, thanks everyone who's sending questions. Thanks to you, John, for coming on. Um, I hope you'll come back soon. Oh, I'd love to. I had a really good time. I'm, it's, it's good to be back on. Yeah. Yeah. Does it, it feel, it feels like old times again. It's like old homes days here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. Um, Big thanks again to John Troughton for coming on to talk uh, to me. Um, And thanks to everyone who sent in a question. Um, They were great. I had a lot of fun answering them. Uh, I feel like (laughs) that conversation was so 
uh, casual in um I mean in tone but just in um in pace I feel like oftentimes I listen back to these shows and I feel like I'm like running or something um it was so nice to just kind of sit back and talk um (laughs) I hope that that came through I hope you guys had fun with that that's something we could do in the future um you know any anything's possible which I love. Uh, I'm feeling really excited about the, I mean, as I talked about when I talked with John, I'm really feeling great about the future and about different things we could do with the show coming up. So um, as we're getting out of here, I want to remind everybody again, uh, patreon.com slash Riverdale podcast. If you want to support the show, that's the best place to do it. There's some uh, exclusive video content that went up this week. So if you jump on, uh, you'll get that. Uh, Patreon subscribers are going to get some some cool video stuff coming up. Um, and thanks again to Dennis, um, our brand new Patreon subscriber, uh, patron. Thank you very, very much again, Dennis. Um, this show updates every Saturday morning, uh, like clockwork, <laughs> if I dare say so myself. You can find us over at RiverdalePodcast.com. You can find us on iTunes, on Stitcher, um, on YouTube, uh, YouTube.com slash Riverdale Podcast. I'm posting the audio episodes there. So you can catch up with the show if you need to catch up with the show. Um, if you've got questions, comments, any of that, I want to hear it. Um, Riverdale Podcast at yahoo.com. You can also find us at facebook.com slash Riverdale Podcast. On Twitter, we're at Riverdale Pod. Um, head over to riverdalepodcast.com slash ask. Leave a question there, a comment there. I'd love to hear it. Um, and you can call in. I love getting voicemails. You can call in to 573 573- Four two seven two four four three. Um, there it is. There's the show for this week. Uh, thank you guys so much. Um, go out and get, or actually, you don't have to go anywhere. Get Die Kitty Die, the brand new uh, independent creator-owned book from Fernando Ruiz and Dan Parent. Um, DieKittyDie.com. You should be able to find everything you need there. Download that digital issue. Pick it up for a few bucks. It is quality. Um, You will not regret it. Um, So grab that. Um, Enjoy your week. I guess that's everything. Um, Thank you guys again so much. Um, I'm so happy to have spent the last four years building this great thing with all of you along with me. I love it. My name is Jonathan, and I'll see you again next week right here in lovely Riverdale, USA.